Welcome back to the House of No Try. It is Do or Do Not, a Star Wars podcast. I'm Dwight Couch, and with me as always, my Star Wars companion, the... I think we've done Chewbacca to, to Han Solo. If we haven't, we're doing it now, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Payton. Chris, how's your week been, my friend? Pretty good. Just enjoying my extra day off again. Loving that. Extra. Got the like three-day like weekend. Again. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Got to run around today and just relax. Any uh, any any great Star Wars details you got from from your relaxation and your venturing out and about? Anything cool that you've acquired? Uh, I picked up a credit series Moff Gideon action figure, but as far as Star Wars, I think that is about not the only thing I got Star Wars related. Awesome. So I'm pretty stoked about tonight's show or today's show, depends on what time of day you're listening to this fine episode but we are going in a new direction since the mandalorian is over we got a small little void here uh, i've yet to watch visions i don't know if chris has watched any of it at all actually uh, i didn't know it came out <laughs> yeah it came out on may the 4th we're being bad star oh, wars fans maybe i need to, i'll watch that this weekend maybe we can touch on it a little bit next week yeah so uh look forward to to delving into that because the reviews i've seen were pretty positive uh, so that's really the only news of note, but, uh, yeah, formatting change. So whether you're a, a young Padawan or a seasoned Jedi veteran, we're going to help you navigate the star Wars galaxy. We in our own right are going to be skywalkers and we're going to navigate everything from the outer rim to the core planets and, and kind of get everyone, whether you've just seen the movies or you're just getting into star Wars we're going to kind of give you a lay of the land of canons, legends, and uh, the cartoons. You know, the stuff you might not be as in tune with. Uh, so that's what me and Chris are going to bring for you moving forward on a weekly basis. And then when Ahsoka ramps up, I am more than positive we're going to be head over heels into that show. And yeah. <laughs> uh, Speaking of that, did I seen and I couldn't find the poster again, but there is a poster that is circulating on social media that is a teaser for it looked like an actual Disney Plus because it was on Ahsoka's Disney Plus uh, web page or, or their Facebook page. It has Ahsoka standing up and it's like she's on like a rocky planet, but then in the background it has deep space and you see the w world between worlds like kind of the portal looking things there and it has kind of the um the graphics that we've seen so far for ahsoka show going in a circle but it's really faded in the background up above that you got the chimera and you got a fleet of tie fighters all these look like normal tie fighters except for the middle tie fighter the middle tie fighter is vader's tie fighter and when you kind of look back at the image the deep space area is Vader's helmet. And it's even further off in the distance where you can vaguely make it out, but you can very much see the mouth of it, of his mask. And uh, it's really got me wondering what all we're going to see and how much, I wonder how much of the timeline is getting ready to get messed up. <laughs> I heard that, but almost uh, <laughs> almost dropped the f bomb there early on in the show. But that this timeline might get a little bit screwy because there's people talking now that the uh, the old man with the orange uh, they've released his name and I can't keep it in my head worth anything. Um, there's some rumors saying that maybe he's from the the old Republic era. And they're going to kind of suck him in somehow. I don't know. That'd be very interesting. They could, they could be doing that to like, kind of open the door a little bit to what is the the first Jedi rumored, you know, TV series is supposed to come out or movie. Yeah. Movie, I think. That'd be very interesting. I don't know as far as timeline goes though. Do you think that she's gonna? 
they're going to bring up the war between worlds much in the Ahsoka series. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be a prominent thread. Uh, just looking at the marketing and everything, even her show title has those markings that were synonymous between the the world between worlds and uh, the sister and the brother and the father. You know, all the markings they have on there, all very interconnected. It makes me. You know, Dave Filoni said Ahsoka's graduated because it went from Ahsoka to kind of Ahsoka the Grey and then she returned at the end of Rebels as Ahsoka the White. There's also, he's also said that where we seen her in Mando when she found out, was trying to find where Grand Admiral Thrawn is, he said that was Ahsoka the Grey. So that was before she went back, you know, so she's got some shit going on that uh, will turn her into Ahsoka White, because I think we see that version in this film. It's just, I just wonder why Vader's on the poster. It's yeah. got his TIE fighter. And who knows, it could be one of the fan-made things that just look really good with the Disney yeah, Plus that's what I was saying. It could be a fan, fan, you know, made it up. Because I was thinking if Vader's going to be in it, it might be, just be like maybe flashbacks or something. I mean, I'm kind of hoping they bring Hayden in and maybe do a couple little flashbacks with uh, him and Ahsoka together or something. That'd be pretty cool. This is like the first series that I think you can actually look at. And like flashbacks are 100% acceptable in this if they use the if they use the same bridge that her and Ezra were at. Right. Because they could just literally walk by something and it could be Luke blowing up the Death Star. Or you walk by something else and it might be, you know you know, uh, the emperor going down the, the tube and Vader's, you know, Vader's return back to the Jedi. Or it could be to walk by and see Luke kissing Leia and so it's like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Do they know? Then she just reaches over and pulls a blind down. <laughs> <laughs> no, John just, my friend John just got done with uh, season three of Clone Wars. And he said that was an awesome season. He doesn't see how they're going to be able to top it, but they do. But oh, I, mean, so, I don't know. So now it's, is it, he watching uh, in chronological order? He started with episode one and episode two, and now he's watching the Clone Wars cartoon. Okay, so he hasn't watched episode three. No. Oh, that's fantastic! That's I mean, the way to do it. I want to say he may have he he may have seen several of these Star Wars movies. But that's back and he wasn't a fan. He wasn't. He said he, you know, maybe wasn't paying attention. And but now he's going back and watching them in order and paying attention and everything now. But he really liked season three because of what you just talked about—the brother, the sister, the father. And he was like, yeah. "That was so cool." And he's like, "I wonder if we're going to see any more of them." I'm like, eh. "I think a little bit." I mean. You know, because like what you said with the, the, the drawings on the wall for the world between worlds and stuff. I mean, I was like, you see a little bit here and there of them still, but it's pretty rare. He's yeah. got a, I don't know, I'm just excited that he's watching it. I wish I could go back and be able to see all that for the first time again. Right. I'd like to be able to watch it in that order. I don't have the patience to sit down and watch all the Clone, the clone Wars. Is the I, one I, thing I did I just, about a year ago, but it's like every time the episode started, I'm like, Ah, uh, it's an R2D2 season three episode skip. Like, oh, it's a Jar Jar <laughs> episode skip. We'll go on to the next one. So I, I did sit down and I finally finished them all before Rise of Skywalker came out. And uh, I wanted to have them all done. But uh, yeah, that's exciting. I'm excited for John. Uh, John, of course, fan of the show, chats in every once in a while. So uh, we're excited to see where you're going to progress to, you know, get to Rebels because. That's the masterpiece, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely good. Definitely good. So, uh, speaking of progression, you've had to have finished the second Thrawn novel, right? Yeah. Excellent. So, you've got you've got two Thrawn no Thrawn eh, Thrawn novels down. Easy for you to say. You got two down. Have you started the third one? No. Okay. Right now, I'm cheap, so I'm just waiting. On the 20th, Audible gives me my free credit, so I'll probably use that to get the third book. All right, so we got eight days before before Chris can venture in <laughs> to the third one. So what did you think of book two now that you're finished? I liked it. I, I Honestly, I, as of right now, 
I like the first one as a whole from beginning to end better. But the second book was good too. But as a whole, I think the jumping back and forth, I really liked the scenes of Thrawn and Vader. When it was Thrawn and Anakin, I was like, I mean, I was listening and paying attention, but I really wanted more of Thrawn and Vader, you know, conversing between each other more than I did Anakin. I understand why they did it, but I, every time it jumped in, it was like Padme and Anakin. I'm like, hurry, get, back to Vader. get back to Vader. <laughs> uh, skip this but, chapter. <laughs> but it, it was good. It was definitely good. I liked it. I, I really liked uh, how he, I don't know, Thrawn's just, he's awesome, man. So now was it the, uh, spoilers for anyone who hasn't read the first two books um the gravity well isn't that is that what he got off of batu uh during the clone wars era was it a gravity well or was it a shield it was a, a shield, shield generator because okay. they didn't have the technology for that i mean the gravity well was what the the was it the gris that, yeah that's what that, they're using to they, pull they people. Were using, yeah to pull them out of hyperspace or something with hyperspace. yeah that was mentioned in the book but he actually was on a mission to get the shield generator because I guess he said the Chiss, you know, didn't have that technology and he was still in it. It's uh, very interesting. So, yeah, you'll have to get through this one and then you you got three more you're going to have to do after that. So we're going to keep you reading all summer. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I might break down a spin. I know they're not expensive. I'm probably 15, 20 bucks, but usually they have sale. I'm hoping they'll have a sale where you can get like you know, three books for 30 bucks or something like that. And I'll buy them all at one time. Yeah. Buy, get a, get a couple extra, extra credits. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm fantastically excited to see, uh, to see what you think when we get into the Chiss Ascendancy trilogy and, uh, you should be done right in time. Well, no, you won't be done. You might get the other one done before the Ahsoka series. So, so you'll have a good setup as far as the Empire links go. And then everything else will be really awesome behind. Um, I have made it almost through the first book of the High Republic. It has been rough. Uh, I just got to where they introduced kind of the bad guys. So I've gotten through, you know, the countdown. And they found out that, you know, the, the things coming back were actually the ship parts of the ship with people on it. So, you know, they, they saved everybody. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a hard listen, uh, to that. I got, I got to say as much as I want, the, the high Republic is having a hard time keeping me focused. Normally by the time I get to the middle or the end of a book, <clears throat> I'm wanting to get that progression done. And, and I'm just not having it with the high Republic so far. And it is definitely one of those areas that I just, I don't know. I just, I, I mean, like I said, I, I, I pick up all the comics up until like a month ago. I just told my comic book store that I get them from. I was like, cancel those, take those off my list. It's like, it just, the comics, I just kept buying them and buying them and reading them and reading them. And then was like, I was waiting for that wow factor, like something to jump off the page. Like, Oh my God, that's awesome. But it's like, it never came. It's like, I don't, I don't like the way they went, you know, just a hundred years before. I just don't see why the writers, you know, these people doing these, let's go a hundred years before and we're going to make it like King Arthur and Knights of the Majestic with their lightsabers look a lot different, like knights, you know, the round table. And just it's like, this was just a hundred years before the whole saga. And then, you know, with, the old Republic, you know, their stuff didn't look like that then. So why is there this short little gap that has things that are totally different from anything we have now? I just, I don't know. I feel like they tried too hard to have something different. That was just my opinion. Yeah. Now I'll tell you what I do like about the High Republic is I do like a couple of the characters. Uh, of course, we got the singy song lady that you were a huge fan of, you know, <laughs> You know, the forces, the music everywhere. Uh, not not a bad character, not a bad I don't care for that particular aspect of the writing, of how they wrote that, maybe. Um, but I like the guy who is with the, the Twi'lek Master. Um, 
his Padawan is a really cool character, has a lot of, you know, really cool traits. Um, I like how they portray the Force, and I'll be interested to see how the decline happens, because I know that book just started, and that's one of the, that's the latest book in the series. And it should wrap up nicely and lead into Acolyte. Um, so I'd like to see what from this, you know, we're going to get a pretty bad shattering at some point. Uh, I mean, none of these people are in, you know, episode one or, you know, that truly, I mean, none that we see in the movies, I guess, I guess they could be in there, but I mean, like, like you said, with a few of the characters, I mean, I thought it was master uh, skier, you know, the, uh, Trandoshan. I mean, I thought that was cool bringing a Trandoshan Master Jedi. And then you had, I forgot his name, but there's the, the big Wookiee Jedi. I mean, that, I thought they did cool bringing in, you know, aliens that we aren't used to seeing as Jedis or Sith. And I thought that was pretty cool. Master Skier was actually probably one of the coolest characters out of the whole thing, of the, my part of reading. I don't know if he was in the novel, but he's definitely in a lot of the comics. He's, yeah, well, he's mentioned in the novel because uh, they, they have all the Jedis together at one point to to circumvent i guess the largest tragedy and uh and he's definitely there for it um and then one of the one of the female jedis was a really cool character she actually passes out in that scene because i guess she got too overwhelmed she could feel but she's like a uh, it was like playing magic or something because it was like it was like somebody you pull up behind your second line that just kind of gives a plus one to everybody's abilities when she's there and active. And I was like, that's a really cool idea. You know, she's not necessarily doing anything, but her presence, she can make every other Jedi stronger. You know, and I, I was like, got a name for that. It's like, is it like battle meditation or something like that? Battle morale or something to that effect. Yeah. I, and I thought that was, I was like, <clears throat> that's a really cool ability. Yeah. So I do like a lot of the, a lot of the new aspects of the force they introduced into that. Uh, yeah. But it also makes me wonder why Yoda became so narrow minded. <laughs> what happened to make Yoda the way he is in, you know, episode one and moving forward uh, versus how he would have been in the high Republic. Cause he would have seen all this other stuff. And then we get to the new, you know, the new era. And he's just like, he's like, Oh no, this is, this is clearly the only way you can't use any other abilities. You can't love. I mean, I guess it just shows you. I mean, I guess during this one, he was 800 years old because I guess in Jedi, he was 900, wasn't he? So he was 800 years old. And the High Republic just proves that how it's not a good storyline, you know, poorly written that Yoda just is like being around all these young Jedis. And he's like, I'm done. This is, <laughs> these guys are idiots. I'm done. That's yeah, it. We're it's cranky. It's over. I've already seen it in a few years. You know, that Chancellor Palpatine guy, he takes over. So, uh, getting into the new, well, the new trilogy, the original trilogy. We're going to talk a little bit about Tatooine tonight. Tatooine, of course, is the, the first planet that you're introduced with Star Wars. It is, it is very much the focal point. And I, I learned something very interesting tonight. Uh, when you look at the galaxy map, and I'm getting all this through the, the Star Wars visual guide is uh, where I'm getting my references from. The visual encyclopedia, uh, fantastic pickup. Tatooine and Geonosis are both labeled and under the same number and are, are evidently very much next to each other in the in the outer rim system and i thought that was kind of interesting number one that just the dynamics between desert and water uh, but it's also you know two key spots in everything that ever happened in in both the prequels and the original trilogy were right right there in the same area so i think in like lucifer and dagobah right there close to them too that's why I wondered why Mustafar was like close to Dagobah. I'm like, I wonder why Vader never found Yoda. I'd, uh, I've actually heard, have you ever heard that why, De why Yoda chose Dagobah? 
and I, I don't know if this is canon or not, but he did because there was so much dark presence there that he knew that it would 100% shield his ability. It, it's so much darkness on the planet that it was, it would be like lighting a match, you know, in an, in an ocean, you would never right. be able to snuff out that light. Uh, because it also talked about how Palpatine sensed him just a few times after, you know, after their battle. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was enough to, to pretty much shield him. And you could go with that hiding right beneath your, you know, Hey, I'll pick the planet right next to yours. This is true. So, uh, got some <clears throat> notes here for us. Early history. Tatooine was first settled by Jawas a species of small hooded scavengers who made their living by salvaging and selling droids. I thought that was very interesting because I did not know this, that the uh, Jawas were the original inhabitants of uh, Tatooine. Were, were you aware of that? Not the originals, no. No, I thought that was pretty cool. Are there Jawas? There's Jawas on other planets, right? Yeah. Yeah, now there is. I mean, because I think it was like uh, sort of like Ewoks. It's like once they were discovered, they kind of, I mean, not like Ewoks. I wondered why Ewoks aren't appearing into more current Star Wars stuff, you know, because it was an indigenous planet. Nobody had ever been there. But now that everybody's been there, you figure some of the Ewoks will get a little curious and want to go travel in the universe. But you never see them anymore, which I was kind of bummed about that. But. I think that's maybe the way the jaw was, you know, they were originally on tattooing and once they start getting interaction, they ended up going to different planets. So I, I thought I, it was in a certain point of view. Um, I, I'm assuming it had to be, it had to be the first, the first book for a new hope, but it tells the little story about the Jawa who was on the sand crawler and everyone else was like, you know, no, you got to do your job. You know, you, you got to be an elf and make toys, Hermie. You can't be a dentist. <laughs> and you had the one little Jawa that, that wanted to be a dentist. He didn't want to be a dentist. He, he, had, his own, he had his own little room too in the sand crawler, didn't he? Yes. And uh, and he wanted to be, you know, out amongst the stars and fly to make it off planet. Maybe that was the first Jawa that made it off the planet, and from there they they flourished throughout the galaxy. Possibly. The planet was later colonized by humans who built several settlements and mining outposts. During the Galactic Republic era, Tatooine was a haven for smugglers, pirates, and other criminals. A hive of, wretch of wretched scum and villainy. The planet was also home to several hut clans who used this as a base of operation during their criminal enterprises. During the Clone Wars, Tatooine was visited by both the Republic and Separatists. The Republic established a base on the planet to track down the Hut crime lord named Jabba. I don't think he would have been that hard to find. No. But Fairly obvious he, which house was he his. had behind that curtain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the Separatists, of course, came and they just wanted to get the Cortosis. Uh, that was the rich mineral of of Tatooine. Uh, then we get in the Galactic Empire era. Following the rise of the Empire, Tatooine became a hub of criminal activity once again. They maintained a, the Empire maintained a garrison on the planet, but was never able to fully control the lawless desert. During the Rebellion era, during the Galactic Civil War, Tatooine was revisited by the Rebel Alliance who sought to recruit Jabba as an ally this time. The planet was also the site of the battle between the Alliance and the Empire, during which the Empire attempted to destroy the Alliance's bases with, with the Death Star. The Republic tried to recruit Jabba? Jabba, yes. I didn't know that. I didn't either. I wonder if that's, that might have been a book. It also could be in Legends. So some of the stuff True. out there is not necessarily all canon. True. Uh, let's see. Post Return of the Jedi, following the fall of the Emperor and the death of Jabba, Tatooine became a more peaceful planet. However, it remained a popular destination for smugglers and outlaws. 
Let's see. Which it looks oh, like it doesn't, when I was looking through it too, it doesn't mention anything which we learned in the book of Boba Fett that Tatooine used to have a lot of water on it. Right. It necessarily wasn't Camino, but, you know, there was a lot of water on it. It wasn't a desert planet back in the day. You know, I thought that was the one of the coolest things on uh, on the Kenobi series was the, was the first episode when it kind of goes in there and it shows the sands and you can see it's clearly they're like working on what was a beached up whale at one point whatever they're doing the, i wondered where that did you learn where that came from yeah yeah but the, you know then it made sense in the boba fett series because it was like well he did mention that it was covered by water so that must have been like an old skeleton that's just there yeah but i had a lot of meat on it like it was a fresh kill and they were harvesting it that's why i took it I just wonder where it yeah. came from. That's why I was like, maybe they brought it in from off world and they're processing it or something. I don't know. Maybe that's kind of remote. You know, that was yeah. far out there. True. You know, back then they didn't care. They didn't have the, <laughs> the, you know, the uh, FDA standards that we have now. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah. It's fish. Oh yeah. Out in the desert. Oh, easily two months, easily two months. It's fine. I'd probably eat it three months in a day. Overall, Tatooine has played an important role in the Star Wars saga as a dangerous planet that is home to some of the galaxy's most notorious criminals. However, it is also a place of beauty and wonder, with its sweeping desert, colorful sunsets, capturing the imaginations of, genu of generations of Star Wars fans. Which, that's absolutely true. I mean, when you think of Star Wars and you think of a planet... Obviously, you think of deep space, but in a lot of it, you do just think of the binary sunset and, you know, in the, the rolling hills of Tatooine. Did Tatooine ever show up in the sequel trilogy at all? I know they had Jakku, which is kind of similar, but uh, I know it was in episode one or the prequels. It's definitely in the originals. I don't know if I can't remember if they ever visited or talked about it in the sequels. <laughs> Be nice if they did, because that'd be the one core planet that's been in all the movies. I don't. I would have to go back and and look <laughs> into that. See a reason, a reason to rewatch the Last Jedi. Yeah, oh, I'd do more of a reason than that. I'll just look on my. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so they mentioned all the deadly creatures that that live on Tatooine, and you know. Coming up in the Ahsoka series, we're going to get some some popular creature from Lothal. But what kind of creatures do we have on Tatooine that are that are large and lumbering around and hiding beneath the the shifting sands? Quite a few. I mean, uh, there's a handful that's like very popular. I mean, of course, you know, you have your the big ones you see in all the movies. A lot of the movies, like the Banthas, the big. Woolly mammoth, hairy elephant looking things that, you know, Tuscan raiders ride on. You also have the dewbacks, which, you know, look like huge lizards, pretty much, I guess, kind of. But, which, actually, we've seen Mando ride on one. I guess originally it was just the stormtroopers always seen on it, but Mando rides on him in, uh, was it season two of Mando? Uh, Probably two of my big favorite ones that's on Tatooine, that's exclusive to Tatooine, is uh, the Sarlacc. God love the Sarlacc. If we, I mean, you know, that's what almost killed Boba. That's what probably killed hundreds of thousands of animals and people on there. Java loved to go there, and we know from Jedi and just throw people in there and feed it which is basically just a big hole in the ground. It's got teeth and tentacles that come out. I don't know. I don't have a picture, but it's like seeing the diagram of what it looks like underneath is very cool looking, but that's probably one of my favorites is uh, the Sarlacc. And then of course the other one, which, uh, you know, I love in certain video games and TV shows and movies was the uh, crate dragon. Which the Kray Dragon looks a little different in the Mando series than what I'm used to seeing. Because th back in the early 2000s when Star Wars Galaxies came out, it was uh, the first MMO I played. Even It came out right before World of Warcraft came out. And I remember you had to go and kill a Kray Dragon to get its pearl. 
because the pearl was one of the ingredients you need to make a lightsaber in that game. And I thought that was so cool that in Mando, when they killed the crate dragon and, you know, the Tuscans were getting all the meat and one of those Tuscans found a pearl and he like holds it up and, <laughs> and everybody, I was like, Oh, that's so cool. They put the crate pearl in the, you know, they made it canon. I thought that was really cool. But, uh, those are probably my two big favorites. I mean, there, there's a bunch, several that I haven't heard of. You know, we got the Rontos, you know, which is like the big, I don't know which, how you would say, like a big rhinoceros giraffe looking thing that the jaw was right on. We see it in the remake of the original trilogy, you know, when they're going into Moss Eisley and one of the Jawas is riding on top of a big Rontos. That was pretty cool to see. Uh, that's when he gets, uh, does he get swung from the, yeah, they get, they get startled and, from the speeder yeah, flat yeah. by. Yeah, that's a Ronto. So the Jawas usually are the ones riding on those. And then I, um, I think that's the same thing that um, when uh, when Mister Slate rings the bell that Fred Flintstone slides down the back of before he goes to the cantina. <laughs> Probably is. <laughs> I think that's the same thing. I think Lucas stole that off the Flintstones, didn't he? <laughs> but. Uh, like I'm wasn't gonna go over every single little thing because a lot of these I've never heard of. I mean, the Opies were pretty cool. Those are your little camel looking. Kind of, you know, we, if anybody's seen the Obi Wan series, that's Obi Wan's little mount that he rides on. It's a Yopi. Kind of, they're kind of like uh, your your camels. So they're able to survive in the desert and retain water like a camel, and just the Got ideal it. beast to ride on. Got an Opie. Over there on the in the uh, oh, was it the Funko Pop? Yes, yeah, I thought that was, yeah, I was liked it cool. more for the Opie than the uh, <laughs> than Obi-Wan. Than Obi -Wan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I almost bought it just because of that. I thought it was pretty cool. But one thing I've never seen that I ran across, they call it a uh, Tatooine Howler, and they it's, there was no picture of it, but if you've seen Empire, you know what to imagine. But the, it's nickname was the desert wampa so i guess there was like an old wampa style creature that lived on tatooine but uh that was pretty cool i thought that was really neat but uh i tried finding everything on that uh you remember in boba, book of boba fett that like four-armed creature that was under the sand that boba oh yeah I like it was like goro it. yeah yeah from uh was a street fighter in it or not mortal combat mortal combat yeah, that, that's what it reminded me of. And, and it's like I was trying to, I mean, I'm sure there's, I did probably just didn't look hard enough, but I was trying to find more info on that because I was wondering if that, it being under the sand kind of made me think that it was probably native to that planet just because it had that defense mechanism, you know, hiding in the sand to catch its prey. But I thought that was pretty cool. I'd like to, well, I actually like to have an action figure of that, but I don't know if they ever make one, but I thought that was a really cool beast on Tatooine too. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That was a that was a really cool scene too. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. It just shows you how bad Boa is. I mean, he don't need his armor. I mean, right? He can make do without it. Um, one that you do the the Womp Rats. You know, they're about the size of a uh, evacuation port that you would put on on a starship that run around. Oh, is it, what is it? About two meters? About two meters. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> See, people like John won't catch on just these corny jokes. Right. <laughs> He'll get he in one will, of these days. He will in a couple of movies. He'll be like, oh yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> He'll go back and rewatch this episode and laugh at it. I get it now. <laughs> oh, now I can join in with them. <laughs> oh, oh, so yeah, Tatooine's a fairly barren planet, you know. Um, but I think one of the things that I liked about it was a lot of the overall the overall inhabitants of uh tatooine i thought tatooine gave us some really cool really cool aspects to star wars uh like the huts yes yeah. one one day one day john will get there <laughs> and, and we will be waiting we will be waiting my friend <laughs> um you know the huts were are one of my favorite job is one of my absolute favorite star wars characters uh so i always like the huts i love the idea of the the criminal underground you know somebody kind of controlling the planet so i thought those were really fascinating 
fascinating uh, species. Also, I thought the uh, Tuscan Raiders, you know, they never got a lot of, uh, got a lot of love with the original trilogy. Definitely didn't get no love in the prequels. <laughs> but uh, the Tuscans are really cool, you know, really in-depth characters. Yeah. And I love the fact that they touched on, that was the favorite part about Boba Fett. Was how they... I don't know if you knew about it. Tuscan Raiders, sorry to <clears throat> interrupt you, but I might Darth, you know, Darth Krayt was a Tuscan Raider. Yes. His, his father was the only Tuscan to known to actually go to Coruscant and become a Jedi Master. And I guess he separated from the Jedi Order and came back to Tatooine to lead his people. And he ended up, you know, having conceiving his son. Which I can't remember his name. It's some some Eotep kind of weird name like that. But he ended up becoming his son. Ended up becoming Darth Krayt. So I thought that was really cool. Those you know Jedi Master and the son being a Sith, and both of them being Tuscan Raiders. I thought that was pretty cool. The uh, the lightsaber would be badass if you could have you know the the the, the whopping stick or whatever that you know <laughs> Boba had. Yeah. Get get a dual edge lightsaber on the on the end of that. That would be pretty cool. Uh, I like the idea that, you know, because it mentions in that book that the humans came in after the Jawas. And then in, in Boba Fett, it talks about how, you know, they're really just, they're humans. They're, you know, they're normal people. They're just wrapped in the garb and that's become, you know, how they dress. That's, you know, that's what I've read. They look like and under there are just kind of normal people who've been out in the, out in the middle of nowhere for a long time. Yeah. I mean, that's what uh, a lot of people hate on the Boba Fett series too. But I just—that's another reason I like the Boba Fett series because it, it like, well, they put a, they breathe life into the Tuscan Raiders. You know, we just like you said, we're just used to seeing them as savages and stealing and killing and everything. But it's like it just this really shows their, you know, very tight knit family. You know, their customs. You know, making the gaffy sticks. And I just. I, don't know, I thought the Boba Fett series did such an awesome job with bringing the Tuscans to life more relatable, I guess you could call it. Right. Yeah, no, I totally agree on that. You know, it, it gave you a, a sense of sympathy for a character that had never had any at some point, you yeah. know. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> From Tatooine pretty big deal i mean you know he he never heard of some, him. yeah he built c-3po oh okay now i know who you're talking about yeah <laughs> he, he couldn't finish the cover but he's the one that you know plugged him in he was all right I, he was all right guy he, he he made a little difference i guess in the galaxy yeah i don't i don't know how much he did you know c-3po was a big was a big deal but anakin but, i mean how another one how about cobb vance yeah I pretty mean, badass saw, dude he's probably one of the most badass dudes. I saw a meme of him and the meme said, you know, you might be cool. And he was riding on his speeder bike and he's like, but you'll never be wearing Boba Fett's armor, riding Darth Vader's pod racer. Cool. And oh like, yes. It was like that. him riding on the pod <laughs> racer, wearing Boba's Mandalorian armor. I was like, you'll never be that cool. Oh, um, yeah, no, that was that. I like that one. He Cobb Vanth is in the aftermath novels. They give a little more of his story. Uh, you know, obviously pre Boba Fett, right? But uh, he was a really cool character in there, and uh, he was a little uh, a little shadier than they have. You know, and he's a stand up sheriff type. There in in the aftermath novels, he was a little shadier how he became sheriff. But he overall, he done it to protect the town. So it was all in the right area. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely an awesome Star Wars character. Uh, you know, Greedo. I don't, you know, we never met Greedo until Tatooine. And we never met Greedo off of Tatooine. So <laughs> actually, I mean, there's a, actually, I just, here's the cover right here. But they come out with the new, it's uh, several comics that I'm, uh, this one's the eighth issue. And it's just pretty much Han Solo and Chewbacca adventures, and Greedo is in a lot of these. He, uh, you see why he desperately wants to kill Solo through these comics because Han screws him over several times. And when that bounty comes up on Han's head, 
that's why Greedo jumps on it because he doesn't like <laughs> it at all. But it's a it's a pretty cool comic line right now. But he, he you can, ever watch he, the? Uh, you watch any of the Robot Chickens? No, no. I've I've seen bits and pieces of the Emperor, but there's one that's so funny. It's um, uh, it shows you know like Greedo and Han in the Mos Eisley Cantina and Han killing him, and then it goes to Greedo's apartment. And the camera's just kind of panning around his apartment real slow. And you hear his phone ringing, and he's not there to answer. And the answer machine comes on, and she's like, Greedo, this is your mother. Where are you at? Pick up the phone. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, that's Han just shot and killed him. Oh, <laughs> like gosh. Cool <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. Oh, so um, who else do we got? We got Luke Skywalker. Another famous Tatooine resident. Yeah, he he did a couple big things. And you, I mean, you got to give props to uh, Lars and Bereave. You know, they did a good job on raising Luke. You know, if they weren't there to raise him, no telling what this universe would be like. You, you would think. Speaking of, speaking of uh, Uncle Owen Baru. and Baru. I, yeah. I said Bereave. Uh, <laughs> Just breathe. <laughs> um, something they weren't doing after shortly after A New Hope. Uh, <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, it is. It it's is too early. Is it, too too early. Soon? is it really too soon? It was like 77, guys. Come on. <laughs> um, you'd think they would have a better life. If you're farming moisture on Tatooine, that's a dry planet how much is the going rate on moisture? Because they were living in pretty frugal times. You would think, but I guess you haven't read the Obi-Wan novel, have you? I have not. Yeah, it, it talks about that. That's the, that's why I thought the Obi-Wan series, man, if they would have just pulled a lot from that novel, it, they could have made four or five seasons. Cause it wasn't just like one villain in the book. There were probably about three that, that was in it. And, you know, they, Lars and everybody that, you know, mined moisture on Tatooine had to deal. The biggest thing was obviously they had to fend off Tuscan Raiders. I mean, they were always constantly being attacked. If it wasn't the Tuscans, it was Jabba's thugs. You know, Jabba's thugs would go out to these moisture farmers and they would, you know, demand a tax. You know, they would tax them hard for the moisture farming. And, you know, it's like, they may make a lot of money off of it, but then Jabba's was there to take like half their money from it. So, I mean, they were struggling with that too. So it was like two different groups that were, you know, taken from the moisture farmers. So that's, I think that's probably why they couldn't have a lot of money. Cause you know, well, if, they, if they didn't go over the tax, you know, then they would beat them up and or kill them. So, um, so now do you read all the Darth Vader comics? The new ones? Yeah. And, I'd seen a, a page off of one in one of the, one of the pages that I follow. And it had a scene that made me very hopeful that maybe we will still get some more life out of Obi-Wan Kenobi and his life on Tatooine because there was a, was there was a scene that has job of the hut and Darth Vader together. And Vader's kind of going over, you know, well, nothing comes from Tat, you know, nothing ever comes from the desert here, blah, blah, blah. But he mentions old Ben. And, you know, because Vader brings up something. And it made me think, I was like, so, you know, they obviously would have had a lot of interactions. And uh, it would be really cool just to see a season of him dealing with Jabba. I mean, you could you could make a whole season out of yeah. him protecting the, the Lars homestead. Yep. I mean, it was that, and then there was another villain that was, he was a human. He was like one of the head moisture farmers, and he was actually kind of ripping off his own people because him and a handful of other people were dressing up as Tuscans and like going to other moisture farmers and like raiding theirs. So it was actually giving Tuscans a bad name, and he ended up getting caught doing it. Obi Wan ended up finding him out, but. That was a you know a second villain you know Jabba and his thugs and then this guy and then there was originally a female Tuscan 
they called her Red Eye because she had a gem or emerald or something that was in one of her eyes that was a leader of some of the Tuscans that were feuding with the moisture farmers. But eventually, Obi Wan ended up befriending her, and like and that's how he kind of like kind of became. I mean, they were like best buds with the Tuscans, but you know they knew who he was and he knew who they were, and they just they had an understanding, you know, of each other. But I mean, like I said, there was like three different villain type people in that one book that could have just spanned over four or five seasons. And that's how Old Ben learned the language of the Tuscan Raiders. And that's not all he learned from Red Eye. He learned more about love. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was hilarious. So, uh, yeah, no, I mean, that would totally be... And plus, you also got the fight with him and and, uh, Chrysanthemum. That happened on Tatooine. Yeah, that was in some comics. That was a cool scene. That's how I really Chrysanthemum got the scar on his eye. Yeah, I really thought we were going to get that in the Obi-Wan series. After they introduced him, I was like, oh, we're going to get Chrysanthemum in Obi-Wan. I was like, that's going to be one episode. Uh, yeah, that would have been awesome. I would love for him to go back to Tatooine. I I like Tatooine. I don't mind sand. I don't hate sand. A lot of I people like are sand. sick of it. You know, yeah. like I said before, to- Star Wars fans are probably the most toxic fans there are. It's like right. they're always going to be complaining. I mean, coming from me, you know, I complain about stuff, but I mean, it's, it's always people complaining about it. I always hear people, I'm sick of, you know, because Mando season one and season two, I think he was back and forth on Tatooine and Boba was all on Tatooine and everybody's just sick of Tatooine. The Obi-Wan series was on Tatooine, but it's where it all starts. It's like the, the Eden, the Garden yeah. of Eden. It's yeah, where it, it all is. starts. It is there. There was a tree of knowledge there, mm-hmm. and and I'm pretty sure Sidious took it. I think you're right. It is. It is kind of the Jerusalem. I mean, that's where, you know. Shimmy, aka Mary Skywalker, gave birth to the virgins in the Force, and and traveled on a donkey, many miles, and found. I think that's how it went, right? And got Something and like uh, that. yeah, Sounds and familiar. she took refuge in the inn. And then the three wise men of Obi and Juan and Kenobi all came <laughs> came and visited. They, they brought him frankincense, myrrh, and a kyber crystal. There you go. And then that's how we got Anakin Skywalker. There you go, John. That's some great Star Wars lore for you. Um, who else? I know we're probably missing a couple more from, from uh, Tatooine. Well, I mean, you've listened to the all the main people right there, right? I mean, you've listened to the from a certain point of view. I mean, there was a whole section with everybody in the cantina had their own story. So, I mean, that's a lot to go into right now. But that was that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. The uh, uh, that's where um, the um, Fiji and Dan and the and the Nodals they had that they were playing in the. Well, that was who was in the cantina, Jawa. right? Yeah, they were originally playing for Jawa or, or Jawa, Jabba because they owed him. And then I think they came there, like snuck away and came there, and Greedo was looking for him. And I think that was where they tied in A New Hope because Greedo came in. That was the time he was going to sit down with Solo. And, you know, what's his name? Dan was saw Greedo coming in was like, oh, no, you know, and they were keeping an eye on him. And then. He ended up getting shot, and I guess he was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was Ooh, a really don't cool have story. to worry about him anymore. Yeah. I want to go back. That was such, that's a really good book. Yeah. Th- those are really good books. Um, some of the events now, of course, obviously pod racing. That's Tatooine was where we were introduced to pod racing and yep. in uh, Phantom cool Menace. Yes, and we got to see, I thought that was a really cool callback in The Mandalorian that, you know, he goes back and visits, and he's like, what the hell's going on here? And, you know, pulls down, and, and uh, Paley, or whatever her name is, is is uh, ripping the dude off, because she's like, ah, it's Boona Eve, you know, big celebration, and I get to charge you more money now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That um, was pretty cool. So, you know, that was that was a cool throwback. I like the, the festivities that they had. I like the fact that they're able to go from city to city on Tatooine. And there's so much more, you know, of the planet they could uncover. But 
when they're visiting a Mandalorian, they're not necessarily going back to the old, you know, they're not on Mos Eisley, they're in Mos Espa, and it's right. got a little bit of a different vibe to it with some different different people. Um, yeah, because you don't want to... Because I think Boba was in Mos Espa, right? That, that whole series, mm-hmm. which is cool. And then the little town outside, it had the little... Oh, what's the other? There's the other little town that they intermingled between the two series too. Anchorhead, Mos yeah, Pelgo. is that where Cobb Vanth? Mos Pelgo was where Cobb yeah. Vanth was. Well, I mean, because I think in the it's either the was it the first season was it the first season of Mandalorian where we see the footsteps leading up to. Fennec Shan's body, and we think she's dead, and everybody's like, oh, who is it? And it was like, maybe it's Boba Fett. Is that season one? Yep. Well, season one, they were in Isley because that's where that young bounty hunter was. Wasn't he sitting in the same chair oh, yeah. Solo was at? And he had his leg up on the table, and I was like, oh, like, get your damn leg off that table. He ain't supposed to be sitting like that. Only one man can sit like that. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess they were in the original canteen and stuff. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, because didn't they go in and wasn't it like all droids? Yeah. And then they were looking at the humans like, what you know, what are you doing here? Yeah, because the droid bartender, I'm pretty sure was, I want to say it was Mark Hamill doing the voice. Either Mark Hamill or Taka Watiti. One of them was doing it. Yeah, I think it was Mark Hamill. Yeah, I know one of them was, somebody famous was doing the voice of that droid at the bar. Um, but yeah, Tatooine's a, a beloved planet full of sand. We got a lot of lore lately, uh, you know, with the new series. We'll get more. I'm sure it won't be the last time we we go and revisit Tatooine uh, in future episodes of Star Wars. And we did definitely got, we did get Tatooine at least once in the prequels or the sequels. What was that? It's where it ended. It's where they ended the Skywalker saga. She buried. Oh, Leia. And she Luke's went to Raiders. the homestead. You're right. I forgot about that. That's when she was spouting off lies out of her mouth, <laughs> saying she was a Skywalker. I remember that now. <laughs> she navigates ships for the Chiss. What are you talking about? She is a Skywalker. Who are you? Yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, that. That is actually pretty cool. So it's been in all the trilogies. So it has. It has yeah. been in all the trilogies. Good call, Dwight. Good call. Well, I just happened to think. I was like, well, you know, the sunset. Oh, yeah, that's how the whole, the non-movies. Oh, sorry, so I was thinking, I was like, no, maybe that was Jakku. And then you're like, the homestead. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. She was burying the sabers. I totally forgot that. Yeah, I hope John's not watching right now because he has not made it. To- <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell you how the whole saga ends right now. Uh, yeah, we'll just save you time. Just don't yeah. watch the last three. <laughs> so now you can just put the Clone Wars away, go about your day, get ready for some football. No need to worry about Star uh, Wars anymore. Don't do that because he'll, he's a big uh, Ravens fan, so he'll be all in the football. Oh, boo. <laughs> boo. I don't like the Ravens. There are so many spoilers. And not enough warning. I do not give enough warning time. I'm expecting if you're listening to this, you should have already watched. Well, he's got anyway. so much to watch before that. By the time he gets there, he'll have already forgotten this episode. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I think that's about all we have as as the binary sunset on another episode of Do or Do Not, a Star Wars podcast. Chris, are there any final words you have for us tonight? None that I can think of. I just, I'm a Tatooine fan. I mean, I like a lot of the planets, but a lot of people hate on it. They say, hey, they hate seeing it, but it's probably my top three as far as planets go. I say probably top two. What would, what would your other planet be? See, it would probably be something similar. It would probably be something Old Republic. I mean, I think we've heard it brought up in Clone Wars, but I don't know, I'm a fan of the ancient Sith world, Corbin. 
like where all the big dark lords of the Sith got their start, the you know Sith Academy. It's like I'm, I'm a big fan of Core Man. You played uh, you played Swotor, right? Oh yeah. What was where was your favorite homestead? Because you got to buy the couple play you know a few places around the galaxy. Where where was the one that you used the most is like to to decorate the most? Like you put all your stuff in. Well, I bought. I think it was cheap and easy to get. Was um, I want to say it's now Hutta. It was it was more of an apartment. It was yeah. It wasn't big. I mean, it had like four or five rooms. You know, kind of. You know, it was something easy and cheap and nice to start out with. But my actual a little big, starter home. <laughs> yeah, a little starter home. <laughs> Uh, but actually funny as you mentioned that my big one that I purchased and I mean, I still, I mean, if I revisited this game, there's probably so much more I need to do to it because I've only decorated maybe, maybe not everything, just like the main four year. There's like two bedrooms off of that, but I didn't even touch them was Tatooine. I mean, I got the Tatooine house. I mean, it's two stories. You take an elevator down, you go out, you're out side and these different you know I, one place i put all my mounts and vehicles around you got a big hangar bay i had the access to the sand crawler that i have i have a sand crawler sitting out there it's like yeah i had the tattooing that was my big house i love that place but i was it was probably 15 percent complete i mean i didn't like put a whole lot into it yet i liked the i think it was on yavin the kind of the temple up in the mountains never saw that one Oh, that's that is the one I like. Can't you go to a droid and like visit them and like get a like a real estate agent, you know, walk you through each one of them? Oh, I don't know. I need to check that out. But I've I've uh I've gotten several of them, but I think that was my favorite. That's the one I put the most work into. Uh the last time I played was that one. And I thought it was really cool because you go out go on one side, it's got a couple levels, and then you go out the back and there's this like curving wall and behind it you got a a uh, waterfall and then you can look over and and as that bridge goes over then you got a stream going down but you look down and then you can see the other the other temples or you know uh rebellion bases uh down there which i, which I thought was cool uh, but that was my favorite because it was very old very indiana jonesy you know you got moss growing down on the inside of a house because that's got to be healthy right yeah yeah there's you get to get uh get galactic eat. lung cancer <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully, uh, like black lung disease or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, hope hopefully no galactic lung disease going on. Um, for Chris Payton, I'm Dwight Couch. This is Do or Do Not, a Star Wars podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, tune in next Friday, same bat time, same bat channel. Do we have us a planet picked out yet, or are we, we do we not still have visions. We do. We should check out visions. We check out a couple episodes. We can talk about visions, and uh, we'll probably find something else. I found got some really cool ideas flipping through the visual dictionary. How about next week, we'll decide on a planet for the next week. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so next week is preparation week. Exactly. It's kind of like That's preparation a, H, but completely different. Same. It don't burn as much. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I got. So, so <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. And as always, may the force be with you. Always.